QuickBooks Online. Save customization or memorize profit and loss reports. Get ready to start moving on up with QuickBooks Online. We're going to be using the free QuickBooks Online test drive searching in our online search engine for QuickBooks Online test drive, selecting the option that has Intuit.com and the URL Intuit being the owner of QuickBooks. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. We're going to be picking the United States version of the software and verify that we're not a robot. Zooming in by holding down control up on the scroll wheel currently at 125% on the zoom in. Noting that in the cog drop down, we're currently in the accountant view as opposed to the business view. We'll try to toggle back and forth between the two views so you can see where stuff is located in each of them. Right click in the tab up top to duplicate it as we do every time. We're going to put our major financial statement reports in these duplicated tabs. Right click in the duplicated tab to double duplicate. As that's thinking, tab to the middle, down to the reports on the left, opening up the balance sheet. As that's thinking, tab to the right, reports on the left. This time the P to the L, the profit to the loss, the income statement, closing up the hamburger, otherwise known as the ham boogie, changing the ranging. 010122 tab, 123122 tab. Run it to refresh it, tab to the middle, close the boogie, scroll up, the rangings, they are a changing from 010122 tab, 123122 tab, run it to refresh it. That's the setup process that we do every time. We've been focusing over here on the income statement reports. And now we want to just consider thinking about putting the reports together to provide to a client at the end of a period or to a supervisor, but primarily I'm thinking as if we're a bookkeeper giving the reports to a client. So the question then would be, what kind of reports do we want to be putting together on a periodic basis, possibly monthly, possibly quarterly, possibly yearly, in order to uh, batch those together and give to a client? Now, obviously, we're gonna want a balance sheet report and an income statement report, but as we have seen now, there's a whole bunch of different variants that we can put together for the balance sheet and income statement uh, reports. So now what we also wanna have a nice organized system so that we can provide the reports to someone as cleanly as possible. So we're gonna think about the different types of reports we might wanna to put together variants on the profit and loss, and then think how can we give these multiple reports to someone in a similar way as we did with the balance sheet. We're gonna say we can email it, we can print them out if that's gonna be applicable, we can uh, save them as a PDF file, we can export them to Excel and use Excel to try to put them all on one PDF file, or we can go to, I'm gonna to go to the first tab, gonna to go to the reports on the left-hand side. We can use our report manager here in order to try to group our major reports that we might provide on a monthly basis into this nice little management report. Either method we use, we might wanna customize our reports here so that we can easily create this stuff on a periodic basis. Now, we would be putting both the balance sheet and income statement reports typically into a bundle at the end of the, of the month, but right now we're just focused on the income statement side of things. So back to the income statement. Now there's two methods that I would typically have in mind. One would be, you're gonna start with the simplest type of report and then expand in detail. That's what I typically prefer. The second method would be that you're gonna use a report that has you know, more data in the baseline report, possibly useful for someone that already uh, has an understanding of accounting. If you're, if you're dealing with someone that's not uh, an accountant, doesn't like detailed reports, most people, in other words, 
then you probably want to start out simple and then expand on the detail, especially if you're giving like a presentation or something. So one way you can simplify the income statement is you can you can collapse the the column. So I can use this collapse button and that will will collapse only the sub accounts. So you see all these sub accounts that we made in here. Those are those are not account categories, uh, categories of accounts, and they're not like financial categories. They're the sub accounts that we created. So this is a quite of a long income statement due to all the sub accounts. So we could collapse that. And now maybe this is where we start. So now we have just like the parent accounts involved. And you could even go further than that. You might have a very simplified starting income statement where you just collapse uh, all of the carrots down to just the, the account types. And now you have a very kind of straightforward type of income statement, still kind of like a multi-step income statement by group. So that's another kind of format that you can use to think about as your baseline or lead in report and then have another report that would be expanding on the data and possibly another report that would give more expansion on the data uh so that's the first method you can try so i would i'm going to go into that middle one expand it and then i'm going to collapse it and i'm going to call this like a summarized income statement where i have all the sub accounts collapsed and then i might want to do my uh, reporting as though I'm going to provide this to a client and that means that uh, I might want to get rid of the uh, this change here make the bracketed numbers bracketed and so on notice that from an internal reporting standpoint I probably wouldn't want to do this meaning collapsing these items because I would like to see the detail right when I go into the when I go into the income statement to see what has been recorded as I do the data input, I would like to see all of the accounts. So, but for external reporting purposes, I might want to collapse them and then do further customizations, which have been our typical routine of, we're going to take the pennies away, make the negative numbers bracketed and red. And then on the header and footer, I'm going to make the title an income statement. So I'm going to call it a summary income statement and then get rid of the date time report basis and that's it so then i'm going to memorize this report so i'm going to say let's save customization i'm going to make a new group i'm going to make them a month in report and report now remember you would probably already also have the balance sheet reports in here in some way as well. And you were gonna have to intertwine the income statement and balance sheet reports, but we're not gonna, you know, put all the balance sheet reports in there again. But note that you might number them by saying, I want this to be the first one in the lineup. So I'm gonna say, this is number one report, save it or save it here. And then go back to the first tab. If I refresh the data and go to the reports on the left-hand side, and look at the customized reports. Uh, there is my summary report. It didn't put the number one in it. Let's edit it. Edit. I'll put a number one in the name and then save it. Boom. So there we have it. So then I'm going to go back on over here. Now, the next thing we could do is I could say expanded and I might include an expanded income statement. However, then you got to ask the question well, if I have an expanded income statement, uh, is that going to get somewhat redundant? Because I could also have a comparative income statement, which already has this total information, but adds some more information to it, such as the last quarter, or the, the, which includes the year to date number. I mean, sorry, the year to date information by quarter, for example. So let's take a look at that. So I could add this one. I'm not going to do that here, but instead I'm going to say, let's give this information on a quarter by quarter breakout hitting this drop down and looking at the quarters running that so now i've got the first second third fourth quarter there's nothing in the first two quarters but you could see what it would look like if there were and the total so you can see the total is still here if i had a normal income statement and this total it would be redundant information however that redundancy might be justified given the fact that you want a simplified income statement and then one that has more data in it. So that's kind of, again, the decisions you would need to make. Notice if we're at the end of the year, the quarter by quarter comparison is going to include four quarters 
it's going to be looking different if you're in January. You're not going to have a quarter by quarter comparison because no quarters have passed. That's why, uh, depending on where you are in the year, you might have different bundles. A month by month bundle versus a quarter end bundle versus a year end bundle or something like that. Because at the end of the quarters, you might have a quarter by quarter comparison or something like that. Year end reports might look a little bit different than a mid you know, month bundle of reports or something like that. So let's, let's save this one and, and make it our quarter report. So what I'm gonna do is just change the name. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it an income statement by quarter or something like income statement by quarter. And then I'm gonna get rid of this, uh, this date range because that's not really useful. I have the dates down below. So let's customize it up top here and say that I wanna get rid of the headers the uh the report period i'm going to remove that and so let's save that one i'm going to copy this name i'm just going to copy it and then i'm going to go to customize i'm sorry not customize i'm going to say save customization and let's name this number two and income statement by quarter putting that in place check it out back to the first tab to see if it did what we thought it should Re refresh the screen see if it pulls in as we would expect so there it is there's number two so that's another method or another format that, that you can use now clearly you can do a month by month uh, statement as well but that's going to get somewhat tedious given the fact that you have an entire year you might run the last three months for example the last quarter you could go from 10 01 22 and run that and and then so so and then i'm going to go not quarters but months and so that could be a, a common comparison so now i've got three months if it's the beginning of the year a month by month comparison could be quite common if you're at the end of the year it might get more tedious if i did the whole year by the way going from uh 010122 to december and running that then the to it's i still have the total over here giving me the data for the entire year so you could you know, run a report such as that as well. When you print this report, you gotta be careful because now it's gonna be quite wide. So you wanna still try to fit it on one page wide. It becomes a bit of an issue there, but you might do something like that. You could have an income statement by month, by month. And I'm gonna copy that. And I'll say save customization. And let's make this number three income statement by month i'll save it that's another kind of comparison that you might have then you might then do a, a two period by two period comparisons so we could say okay so now i want to just compare two periods instead of getting the total i'm going to take the difference so i'm going to go okay let's go back to the totals only and run that report so i'm back to where i start with and let's compare the last month the current month i'm in december to november and I'll take the difference between this month and the prior month. So I could go, okay, let's go from 120122 to 1231, run it. And then I'm going to select up top and take the prior period and the dollar change and percent change. Run it. Boom. So there's that report. So now I've got a comparative report. I might call it an income state. A, let's say comparative income statement. Comparative income statement, statement, current month, 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 and prior, prior month, something like that. I'm going to copy that. And so that could be another variant on the report that I'm going to use. I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, save it, save customization. I'm going to call this number four and boom, something like that. I could compare the last quarter and the prior quarter. So I could change this to 10 01 22 and then run it again. So now I'm comparing the, the last couple quarters. And then I could say, okay, I'm going to save customization or let's change the name. And this is going to be income statement, uh, 
comparative income statement, current quarter and prior quarter, something like that. And I'm gonna copy that and we'll, we, we will save customization. And I'm just gonna rename this to number five, boom, save it. So that's another format that we can have. And you can see, and then we can compare to the prior years. So then I might say, okay, then I want another one here that's gonna be comparing to the prior year. So I'm gonna say, instead of the previous period, I'm gonna say compared to the previous year with a dollar change and a percent change. Okay, so then I'm gonna say, okay, run it. So now I've got, I've got the quarter, uh, what do I have here? I've got the quarter end versus the prior quarter, right? Prior quarter of the same quarter. There's nothing in the prior year, but you can, you know, you get the idea. So I could then have a comparison of that and then change the name up top. So now I'm going to say it's an income statement. It's going to be prior, prior year, let's say year quarter. And so I'm going to say current quarter compared to prior year quarter. And then I'm going to say copy. And then I'm going to customize, save customization, select this whole thing. This is number six. Now, boom, number six, I might do that for just the, the last month. So I might do a comparison of 120122. So now I'm comparing December to prior year, December, even though there's no nothing in the prior year for this example. And then I can say, okay, this is the current month. I'm going to say current month and prior year month. And I can say, okay, run, well, let's copy that name and then customize it. And so I'm going to customize this number seven, run it, save it. And then I might do the full year. So I might say current year versus the prior year, but then taking the difference between the two. So I could say, this is going to be 010122, run it. So now I've got the current year versus the prior year. So now I've got the income statement current year versus the prior year. And I'm going to copy that. So you can see there could be a lot of variations and it will be dependent upon where we are in the year. What I have in the first quarter, I have different options, less options typically than if I'm at the end of the year, I might have different reports mid quarter than quarter end. I might have different reports quarter end than year end. So you might have different bundles that you can kind of customize so that as time passes, you can, you can organize them as easily as possible and provide them as needed. So now if I go to the first tab here and I was to refresh it and then go down to my reports on the left-hand side, now I've got in my customized reports, I've got these numbered out. So now if I'm going to provide these reports to somebody, I can have someone else do it, right? I can just say, Hey, look, go into my, go into the month end reports and provide them. You can go into each of them, change the date range to the relevant date range and email them, but you probably don't want to email eight reports. And if you include balance sheet reports, you could double that. And we could have other reports that we're putting together. So maybe then instead, you would say, you know, print them out as a PDF file. And then once they're in PDF format, we can put them in a cloud drive, maybe to provide them to someone having them numbered. So we can have some idea of, of what order they should be opened in, or we can zip the file so we can email it in that way, or we can uh, print them out to an Excel worksheet. And if they're all on one Excel worksheet, we can use Excel to put them all on one PDF file and give it to somebody in one file that way, which can be nice and allow us to do more formatting in Excel than we can do on these reports, or we can use these reports to then make their little management report that they have put together 
giving it a little bit more professional look and feel to it and also allowing us to get all these reports on one PDF file, which is a nicer way to be distributing them if they're like a month end, uh, year end, quarter end type of bundle. So we'll talk more about how to do that in future presentations. Also just note, these aren't necessarily, you know, exactly what I recommend doing you want it at the end of each year, meaning these exact reports. You got to think about which reports you think are best for your particular clients, how you're going to put them together. Clearly, we would have both balance sheet reports and income statement reports, and then possibly other reports, possibly sales and expense reports uh, in our bundle as well. But this is just an example of how you might kind of format those bundles and the different kind of variants of the income statement or profit and loss reports you might put in them. So let's go ahead and change to the business view just so we can see where we're located. I think we've been in the same spot pretty much the whole time here, which is under the, the business overview, under the business view, and then of course the reports.